All right, church family, it is time for another REAP video. Uh, REAP is an acronym for Read, Examine, Apply, and Pray. And it's what we've been using over the past several months to try to dig in deeper to God's Word in order to understand it and have our lives transformed by it. So today we have in front of us Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. It's the first of the letters to seven churches from Jesus. And we're going to first start today by looking at the E of REAP, examine. So I'm going to trust that you have read through the passage. And now I want to show you just one way of kind of looking through to see the structure of these letters. And then it'll start to help you understand what Jesus is saying to the churches and then move toward the application, which we'll look at later. So let's start by examining this. Now you'll know there are several different um, structural features of this letter. It starts off at the very outset with simply who it's to. So to the angel of the church in Ephesus. Those are the recipients of this particular letter. And then it says who it is from. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars at his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. So this is Jesus. Jesus is the one who is identified as the recipient, or the one who is writing each of these messages to the churches. So uh, and one of the interesting features about these letters is that it, each one says something about Jesus that the church, this particular church, needs to hear, which will come out later as we look at the content of this. And then the content starts with some positive things about what is happening in this church. So for them, I know your deeds, I know your hard work, I know your perseverance. So these are really positive things here. So uh, that means that they're they're living out the gospel. They're, they're not slacking off. They're doing hard work. And then they're persevering. Even though times are hard, they're sticking fast to it. And he also mentions two uh, other specific things here. You, you can't tolerate wicked people. That's a good thing. They, they can't stand that kind of false teaching here. So you can't tolerate wicked. And that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are false prophets. So you have tested those. And then again, you have persevered. You have endured hardships for the name of Jesus. You have not grown weary. So much to celebrate about what this church is doing. So those are all really positive things. And then each one of these letters is written to a church that has something that they need to address. That's the thing that comes next. Jesus says, no, I hold something against you. You have forsaken the love that you had at first. So there's a problem within this church. And that problem, after it's identified, then comes with an action step. So in light of all that, consider and repent. That's the action steps that they need to do. So consider how far you have fallen from their first love that they have lost, and repent, and then go back to doing the things that you did at first. So recover that fervor of the gospel that you had at the outset of living in love toward each other, living in love toward God, and living in love for the mission that God has given us. And there's a warning. If you do not do that, then Jesus says, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Now, it's interesting in this one, it comes back to this positive statement. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. And so another thing to add to the list of positive things at this church in Ephesus. And then it closes out with, with two more things. One, kind of a solemn statement that we need to pay attention. Whoever has ears, hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So that's for every one of us who's reading. That's the action point, is, is listening to what Jesus says, listening to what the Spirit says to the churches. And then finally it ends with this promise at the very outset. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. So these seven elements are repeated throughout these seven letters that Jesus gives to the churches. And just a quick look at the structure there will help us understand how these different messages give the church what they need from Jesus, identifying specifically who Jesus is in each one of those. It's really worth time spending slowly looking at that, who Jesus is, and then looking at some of the things that Jesus wants to see in the church. 
and then looking at some of the problems. For some of the church, it's moral compromises. For some of the churches, it is uh, religious compromises. For them, it's, it's simply getting back to the love that they have. So we see where some of the churches have gone wrong, and then we see what Jesus commands them to do, to repent, where they need to repent, how they need to hold fast, how they need to be faithful to him. And then, it throughout, again, there's this thing, this solemn call to actually listen to what God says, listen to what uh, Jesus says to the churches. And then this promise that there is a good future out there. If we actually do what Jesus calls us to do, if we repent, if we are faithful to him, then we will get to be part of his new creation. We'll get to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. So don't just rely on me for this. Get into the word yourself if you want. You could print it out. You could use different colors like I like to do. You could do different indenting and grouping it together. But take a look at this. Dig into the word. Examine what it says. Ask questions of the text. Make observations. And then after that, you can start to apply, well, what does this mean for me? What does this mean for our church? How do we live in obedience to Jesus? How do we listen to him in light of his word?